Chapter 5, Where Am I Going? Susie could not believe how many men and women it took to escort one famous woman and one small child to a meeting. When they made their way outside the White House, Susie saw that a very special car was waiting for them. She had seen limousines on television and in the movies, but this car was very different. Susie never imagined a car could be so beautiful, shiny, and enormous as the one that was heading toward them. Although it looked to be old-fashioned, why would the car be old-fashioned? Because it's 1940s. It's in the 1940s. Yeah, and it's really like back in the days. Back in the days, exactly. Um, although it looked to be old-fashioned, it had an elegance that could not compare to the cars back at home. There were many other important-looking cars in front of and behind what appeared to be Mrs. Roosevelt's car, and Susie couldn't help but wonder where they were going. When Susie climbed into the car, she felt she was entering someone's private den. The large black leather seats were soft and comfortable, and there was a small coffee table and reading lamp nearby. Susie, Susie noticed there were several magazines and newspapers on the coffee table, and she could see one magazine that had a picture of Mrs. Roosevelt on the cover. She picked it up and read the caption, Former First Lady to Address the United Nations General Assembly on Human Rights. Susie was confused by this and even a little scared. The date on the magazine was December 5th, 1948. This had to be an old magazine, and yet it looked brand new. When Susie saw the date on the two newspapers was December 9th, 1948, she became even more confused. Was it 1948? But how could that be? Susie knew her own birth date was December 10th, 1999. She wasn't even born in 1948. Mrs. Roosevelt sensed something was bothering her young friend. She put her arm around Susie's shoulder and said, My dear child, Try not to worry. I have no doubt this will be a day you will always remember, even though right now it may seem a little confusing and overwhelming. Susie felt the sincerity and warmth of Mrs. Roosevelt's words and put her worries aside. She knew she was in the care of one of the world's most famous and important people who would not let any harm come to her. Hmm. All along the way, cars were pulled over and people were watching and waving as the long Lincoln Continental Coupe with an American flag on each fender, made its way down the highway. Susie felt like she was the only one who didn't know what was happening. Just then, Susie noticed the car was taking an exit marked with an airplane and an arrow. She turned to Mrs. Roosevelt and asked, are we going to the airport? The former first lady put her hand in Susie's hand and smiled and nodded her head. Were they going to meet someone? The only time Susie had ever been to an airport was to pick up her Uncle Andrew when he came in from California to visit last Thanksgiving. A few minutes later, the car made its way past all the check-in areas marked for the airline companies. It slowed down as it took a turn into a road that led away from the rest of the airport traffic. They seemed to be headed towards a very large building with very, very large garage-like doors. Slowly, very slowly, one of the enormous doors began to rise. Susie could see there were two shiny silver airplanes inside the building. It was then that Thu Susie thought she understood what was about to happen. Are we taking a plane to your meeting? Susie asked the former first lady. <clears throat> she had never been on an airplane before, and the thought of it both scared and excited her. Yes, Susie, we're going to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. Ocean. The meeting I have to go to is in right. Paris, France. France. Good, good. We will sleep on the plane tonight, and when we wake up tomorrow morning, we will be there. Do you speak any French, Susie? Speak French. Fly across the Atlantic Ocean, Paris, France. The farthest Susie had ever been away from home was when her family took a train to New York City to see a Broadway play. Sleep on the plane. Susie suddenly realized she did not even have a suitcase with her. No pajamas or toothbrush or hairbrush. And what would she wear when she woke up? The closest thing Susie knew about anything French was ordering French fries, and she wasn't sure that they were even really French at all. And what about her parents? They were probably wondering where she was at this very minute. Mrs. Roosevelt sensed that Susie was feeling overwhelmed. She reached into her pocketbook, took out a small envelope, and handed it to Susie. This letter came to my office for you, my dear. Susie opened the envelope and immediately recognized the handwriting. Who do you think the note's from? Maybe her parents? Could be her parent. 
her grandma, yeah. wise beyond your years, it read, My dear Susie, I know this will be an important and magical birthday that you will always remember and treasure. I also know you are in good hands and will come back to us safely. Trust your heart and your instincts. You will know just what to do to make the most of this journey. The letter was signed, With Love, Granny Ella. But how did her grandmother know where Susie was? And how did she get this letter to Susie? She had no idea.